Oh yeah. That, that There's a, he's wedding. a new one. Yeah, I got yeah, married. That's awesome. What? Week one? Week one? This is the second week. My first week, I was off all week. I just got oh, back that's this right. past Sunday. Second week. First, second week of marriage. <laughs> marriage. That's a blessing. Marriage. Yes, it is. Marriage. Tied the knot. You know, the one thing I... Death was arrested. <laughs> you sharing with me, you know, we were, I don't know what we were talking about, but it was family. And you, you I remember you sharing the fact that that's... That's what you you wanted. You wanted a family. You wanted kids, and you wanted to have your own family. Yeah. And then look what God's look what He's done. Yeah, and I, I'm and starting it, to learn more and more that it won't be my family. It'll be Jesus's family. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. That's right. You know. Oh, um, and right here to be able to do it right here. You came uh, to a men's refuge to get married. Right. I guess so. Uh, <laughs> how does that yeah. sound? I mean, yeah. not, not yeah. say it out loud. Married, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I mean, I remember married to Jesus first. Right? I did. Yes, that's, sir. That's <laughs> I was his bride. Yeah. And so, so in that, like, yeah. he's going to provide all your heart desires. Yeah. And as and it doesn't make any sense. That's how you know it was God, right? Yeah. That was, was yeah. That was one of my earliest desires here as as, uh, as a resident. I saw. Landon Wise and Todd Pearson and Alan Cole and Nolan Dill and James Ashley and Brian Tuggle and their and their houses. DeAndre he had a house and family up here and I you know, if these guys come from the background and past that I came from and they have that, then why can't I have it? That was something I thought would have been impossible before I got to the ministry. And the, it was. The good Lord will give you what your heart desires if it is good for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he wouldn't have gave it to you if it wasn't good for you. Yeah, so, I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I, if I ever get in, in front of him, though, I have to be reminded. And yeah. uh, I'm sure you will. We all be do. it with me and yeah. who it is. And, uh, you know, but it's, it's, it's been a blessing. <laughs> it's been a blessing. Like and I didn't come to John 316 Ministries having the person in mind that I was going to date or anything like that either. You know, that just, it, it, is, it is who it is. And Amanda is a, a big blessing in my life, and uh, she helps me follow Jesus. And um, so I, I think it's been a blessing, really. Uh, Guarantee it. Too, uh, too soon to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk to, with, talk to me with a magazine. All right. Uh, so I don't, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Chris. I'm Scott. Scott, nice to meet you. Scott, Scott was one of the first people I met when I moved to Fayetteville. From the church? From the church. And and uh, he was looking for community. I was looking for community, and <coughs> you know, we did Bible studies together because there wasn't anywhere to do a Bible study, and 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 you know, and um, we've been we've been in ministry work together ever since. I wasn't I wasn't from the church when we met. I was at the church because I didn't know of anything else. Mm-hmm. Everything else didn't work. I just showed up on a why not. Hmm. You know, and Malloy showed up. Uh, it was about a month into it, probably. Uh, I was really starting to question everything. I didn't didn't have any idea of what following Jesus really was. You know, I'd always seen the uh, the examples of following Christ that drive people away from it. You know, yeah, the way that the devil wants us to look at. A life with Christ. You know. That's right. It's a bunch of judgment and people not living what they're preaching and all that. And, and then Malloy showed up. Amen. Uh, Amen. You Everywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this crazy dude. You know, he doesn't know a stranger. He walks into every room and people say, well, How long have you known him? I just met him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, God knew what I needed, and He He brought Malloy right yeah. along at that that time where I was I was fixing a bolt. You know, I was, that's what my pattern was: get thirty days and mm-hmm. run off. Yeah. And he said, "Hey, have you ever heard of John three sixteen? I was like, "No, nope. I don't have any idea what that place is." And we started traveling back and forth, and I fell in love with this place. I had ideas about some kind of recovery ministry, but mm-hmm. didn't know. I didn't even know how to be in recovery, let alone mm. ministry. Right. So, the first trip that um, we made over here, you know, it was a month. I had been out a month, 
And, of course, you know, my daughter and my son-in-law, they wasn't really just buying in to everything that I had going on. Mm -hmm. You know, there was still a lot of trust issues. And, and I told Scott when we got in the vehicle, I said, man, I said, everything has got to go just right on this trip. You know, um, it has to go right for, for you, for me. Um, and so before we left Fayetteville, we talked about, you know, how we were going to travel and, and because I wanted it to go right, you know. <laughs> um, so we had a big discussion, you know, before we left, yeah. you know. And that's, we've had some good times. We've had some, we've had some rough times. Some knockdown drag You guys. know, ministries can be rough at times. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, uh, but it, it's a blessing to, to to work with Scott, you know, side by side, and and carry each other's burdens, you know, um, and and doing God's work. No, knowing that you're working with some right side by side with somebody that is truly in their calling, that they're not just there for the money. Right. You can pick them out. Oh yeah. You can pick them out. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he's whatever not that, you spend your time dedicated guy. to, he's not that guy. Right. You know, and I'm I'm blessed. But we have a we have a lot of people that at our church. There's so, there's a lot of different ministries out of that little old church, and and here, I've seen it several times. The different ministries coming together with one project. When I say project, I'm talking about somebody who's in need, mm -hmm. and and how God uses all of us and our different ministries to help someone who's in need. You know, that's pretty cool, mm -hmm. and especially, you know, uh, man, uh, getting in that pit with them. You know, uh, people was got. People who have children, and I mean, we watched our church pull together, and you know, when the parents wasn't able, you know, the, the church pull together and and do what they have to do to make sure the kids are safe and the kids are good and the kids are getting loved on, and you know, it's it's, it's interesting. You know, and there's, that's something about this place that is special. Is there's nothing else like it in the world that I know of. Nah. You know. Uh, that church is is the same way. There's nothing else like it. They're completely different that place and this place, but they're unique. You know, they're a part of the body. Mm -hmm. They've got their function. Yeah. You know, uh, this one here, you know, is bringing men to Christ, getting them sober. Mm -hmm. You know, giving them that foundation, and everything is given to you. You've got a network of people that are given to you here. Mm -hmm. You know, watching people like Brandon Lee. You know, come out of here and jump in the middle of what we're doing there. Mm -hmm. You know, pouring oh. into men. You know, he doesn't have to be there. Right. He chooses to be there. Mm -hmm. it, it's a want to for him. Uh, and it's an example for us. You know, that's what we've got to continue doing. Right. Uh, so, Brandon Lee is a blessing. He is a blessing. Absolutely. And to watch that guy network, you know, he, he could do that. He he could Full spend time. he could spend his whole he could spend every day as long as he wants to. I've been around him, uh, I mean, and watched him network, watch him pay something down the sidewalk in the front of the house, <laughs> you know, on that phone, yeah. and, then, and then look over there, and then one of us have been pacing on the other side of the house, and, and it's just you never know who he's talking to, you know, and of course we get into all kinds of you know. Talk to people all over the place. It's just crazy. And you go from here, you know, to South Fayetteville, and it's as far as the east is from the west, right? right? You know, <laughs> and people, <laughs> yeah. and people. I mean, just a whole different world. And then seeing guys from here come there and, and pour into that community, you know, it's broken people 
you know, and that, that church draws broken people. Yeah. Uh, it, it, that's what drew me to it is I didn't have anything else. Yeah, they, in the Bible it says that a church should look like a, what, a hospital. Mm-hmm. You know, it should have the sick, it should have the suffering, it should have the afflicted. Um, you know, and a lot of times we go to church and, and people uh, kind of scoff, you know, what am I going to wear? You know, I, I went through that this morning in my own head. What am I going to wear? Well, I'm at John 316 ministry, so uh, why not wear my red shirt? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so so uh, that, that made it real easy for me. I, I could get away with wearing a T-shirt or I could look nice, you know, and um, because the church uh, offers love first. You know, that's the badge that Christians wear is the badge of love uh, first and foremost. And then after that, we have joy, we have peace, you know, and we're able to attract people that way. We attract people through, their, through our actions. And, and what, what Brian says here and what we learned at John 316 Ministries is first a guy learns how to feed someone. He said, the first thing I do I ain't read them a Bible verse, it's offer them some food. You know, we offer them a place to live for six months to a year, then they get a plate of food, and then what? You hang out, and then you go eat again at 5 o'clock, then what do you do after that? Well, my first day, I went to the volleyball court, ran around the pond four times, you know, but not everybody does that. You just wake up in the next morning and you go to Bible study at 6, mm-hmm. and uh, and we eat again. <laughs> I think the reason why you wear that is because now you're not single, so now you just kind of let yourself go. And that was <laughs> that's that's, 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 that's kind of like what So I you're hear. saying I don't have to impress anyone. <laughs> But I do. Yeah. I do. Amen. I just, I did it for the podcast, guys. <laughs> and I got it free last week. I just yeah. figured I'd get twice as much out of it. Yeah. Well, we appreciate what you're doing, Todd. You know, uh, being a graduate and a, uh, an old instructor, um, Scott, um, man, just being a part of that, getting in when you fit in, and uh, building that network and relationship and uh, going to our cause, to our purpose, having a goal. And that's what we're all called here to do. And we appreciate y'all coming and being on here. And, um, you know, we've just, you know, we've already said from South Fayetteville, um, different things are going on with the church and with Transition House, uh, with different ministries. Hmm. Um, you know, I guess just if you want to share a little bit more about, you know, about the house, uh, more about the church and just anything that's kind of on your heart, feed us some information. Uh, did y'all have a, a concert or a band not too long ago, anything kind of like that that's y'all got uh, events and stuff. We'd like to promote y'all and promote different things going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We the Kingdom was in Fayetteville. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm jealous. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> man, it was good. I didn't, know, I didn't see that. It was yeah. good. It was above and beyond. Yeah. It was good. Uh, you know, Ed Cash, he's a special guy. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Scott connected with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Q and A. You know, just sharing about uh, working with people in addiction. You know, and then hearing them all share about uh, their own personal brokenness that's brought them to Christ. You know, nobody comes to Christ because we're doing good and we're just bored, mm. looking for something else. Right? Mm. We're broken. You yeah. know, there's something inside of us that needs to be fixed. Yeah. Um, and it's not something that a person is going to be able to do. Jesus is the only one. Mm-hmm. So. Um, being in ministry there at the church, at the house, it's a lifestyle. It's not a job. It's not a title that we carry. You know, it's a lifestyle that we have to live, uh, doing life together. People that are, that come into our house, we want them to, to be involved in our families. We want them to be involved in the church family. Um, it's not something that's exclusive. You know, everybody's involved. Everybody's uh, expected to, to participate in everything that we're doing, yeah. you know. Somebody knocks on the door, we got to get up because they need something. You know, Jesus brings us the ones that are in need. He said to feed a sheep, right? Mm-hmm. And he didn't call us to judge which one is his sheep and which one isn't his sheep. He calls us to feed them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never know when you're going to bless an angel. So being where we're at, it's it's always a test. Everything's a test. Right. Um, so understanding that we're being tested and that, uh, every action that we have carries weight. Uh, you know, what better place to do it? You know, mm-hmm. Right next to a church, you know, we can walk across the parking lot and be right at Genesis Church. Uh, kids playing out on the, the basketball court all the time. Uh, you can go out there and minister to kids. Uh, we've got a wise kids program where they take um, at-risk children that are in the schools that get referred to the church. Uh, and we get involved with them, build relationship, show them a safe spot where where they can come back to if they ever need us yeah Um, 
We've got a new ministry called Circles that's starting up that's helping people that are in poverty that uh, as they come uh, into the, the Circles program, uh, they surround them with people, teach them how to be a leadership in their own, or a leader in their own life. Uh, they're called a group leader, a circle leader. And then they get surrounded by allies that help them to work out of poverty and achieve goals that they have set for themselves and be a leader in their own life. Mm -hmm. uh, Christ at the center of all of it. Right. Um, there's just there's a lot of stuff. We've got a, a man up Bible study at 6 a.m. on Friday mornings that men can come to uh, from our community. Uh, and it's amazing how many men will show up at yeah. 6 o'clock when they don't have to. <laughs> hey, for the people watching, what's the address? Hey, it's 205 West MLK um, in South Fayetteville. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that would be good. And then we could also post your phone number. If you want to share your phone number, we can post uh, it above your head. Mine is 870-350-2086. That's if anybody needs any hope in uh, the Fayetteville area. Um, that would be something. And, and then Malloy, if you wanted to share any information. or Sure. Um, where Scott focuses on, you know, everything in the house and, and the men that are in the house, you know, we, we both live in the house. And Scott's focus is the, the house, and, and we both share leadership in the house. But we also have outreach, mm -hmm. and, that's what, and that's what I'm focusing on. Um, is is the the outreach of of the ministry and you know, I'm constantly on the phone uh, with families, uh, broken men, uh, broken women, um, and and trying to find them the right the right place you know for help um, you know and, and you know of course we want we want to you know send the men here to John three I mean this is where I found. Mm -hmm. This is where I started living, and uh, this is where I found Jesus, and and uh, and I love this, you know, I love this ministry, and so, you know, I try to, you know, uh, help them get to where they need to go, you know, and 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 it's and it keeps me busy. I also have other other roles in the church, um, you know. Scott heads the CR at our church, and. And uh, I help him with that, and and then also, you know, we go out and uh, and we minister to to the ones on the street corners, and uh, we have family members of the church, you know, that that are, you know, in some are in hospice or some in nursing homes, and and I'm able to get out and visit with them and minister to them, you know, uh, especially since the COVID has. Um, uh, getting behind us, and so we're getting out more. Uh, That's right. You know, there's there's a there's always something to do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, heck with that COVID. Yeah, heck with the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we're we're starting to have more men that have graduated John three that are in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, and and so we're you know. We're starting to, to do a lot more stuff together, and there's a lot more men together, and and uh, so it's you know we're forming that community, and and uh, and we're excited about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, being in discipleship with with uh, with other men. Right. So, well, that's you know that's good, and then of course, uh, we of course we're excited about you know the the, the faith house coming. Um, you know, one thing about going on Ticket Trail is when you go to a town that a guy's from on Ticket Trail, you find out who the guy was. And, uh, you know, it seems like you're uh, an honored person in, your t in, in Stuttgart. It doesn't, doesn't seem like you are. Uh, Malloy was a legend. Every time I go in a place, I'd be like, you ever hear Todd Malloy? Todd Malloy? Yeah, I know Todd Malloy. He's, uh, he works out there at, uh, at, uh, at the Seed Stratton. I was like, no, he don't want uh, He's uh, working for Jesus, and now everybody knows that now. Um, but man, it's it's just you killed the biggest alligator in the town, and you know just all all these little like little stories I hear about you. I was like, man, I love Tom Boy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know, it's like it's like you threw the baseball further than anybody ever threw a baseball, in, you know, in, in the history of the town. And I love that, you know, and everybody knows who you are. 
Uh, so being an advocate for the Arkansas County Faith House is something that, man, I, I really, I've come to learn to appreciate. I used to want to be the guy that raised all the money. You know, I want to be that guy. But, um, you know, we're we're doing different things, and, and what God's called you to do is help people find a place to go, uh, is to communicate that to the people that there are places for you. There is hope out there. Absolutely. And uh, and then also, yeah. hey, I can also help raise money for an Arkansas County Faith House at the same time as doing all that. Um, Amen. You know, that, that's really cool. Um, you know, I know Brian pulled you up on stage just a little bit earlier to talk and about uh, the works and then, of, of course, the, the price of lumber, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> I, I don't ever take any of that into consideration. Uh, I just know. I just know this. I, I would. I'm willing to help the next guy, uh, and do what it takes to help the next guy. And what you found out is that means building a house, or, or helping helping see to it that we do build the house. And, absolutely, absolutely. That, that that's the least I can do for this ministry. Um, and when I come here, it was it, I was at the bottom of the pit. I didn't have a will to live, and and. Uh, you know, my daughter brought me here, and she was, I think she was 20, mm. 19 or 20, uh, still in college, and um, I can, you know, she's a she's a woman of faith, and I, and I can remember uh, leaving from the green room, you know, after the interview and going over to uh, the butler house, you know, she's like, Dad, I wish I could stay here with you, and I, I had no idea what she meant by that, but I do today. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, um, being here and being an instructor and, and uh, you know, having everything, that absolutely everything that I needed, uh, didn't want for anything and got fed the word, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, that's the least that I can do is, is be a part of, of, of something that will further the kingdom, you know, and then you know being here and then leaving and and James Ashley, you know I'm, you know we were riding and he was you know I was like I want to do something for the ministry, and uh, he was he just stopped me. He said you know all this ministry wants you to do is good, and that stuck with me, mm -hmm. um, because he knew what I meant, but all he wanted me to worry about was doing good. And and it was a you know that was a blessing, um, you know so, you know God's moving in Arkansas County. There's a lot of there's a lot of of people who are are, are beginning to 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 know about the ministry there and and you know the prosecuting attorney. Uh, there's a lot of legal you know uh, people who are in office that that you know, know this ministry and have the respect and they know what the ministry is about. They believe in it and, and because they know the main thing is the main thing here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what's driving it. And, and, and I'm just, man, it, it's an honor to even be having this conversation. What's a blessing is, is watching Malloy in Fayetteville, you know, all the legends that you hear about Malloy in Stuttgart. They travel to Fayetteville too. <laughs> we'll, we'll be in ministry with somebody talking to them, and Malloy will say, "Hey, do you have anybody that has farmland in your family in Stuttgart?" Absolutely. You know, there's always somebody that he ends up knowing yeah. in their family. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, just in watching him work on this faith house for for the ministry, uh, you know, one of the things I tell the guys at the house all the time is, you know, how blessed a man is by the way that he blesses others. Right. You know, whenever we are truly blessed. It's not about receiving blessing anymore, but it's sharing that blessing. And Malloy lives that out all the time. You know, it's not something that he does just for show. It's not something that he's doing because somebody's looking. You know, when nobody's looking, that's what he's doing. Yeah, That's what he does with all of his free time. Uh, you know, he's working on this faith house for, for men to, to have the same opportunity that he's had. You know, that's how, how we can see the fruit that, you know, he has been blessed. Yeah. And it's not about the blessings that he's going to receive. He's not trying to work towards the blessings that he's going to get. He recognizes the blessing that, that Jesus died for our sins, that we are forgiven. We don't That's deserve right. it. We got his grace. You know, he's been blessed, so he's going to bless. 
You know, and God doesn't settle for that good mm-hmm. enough That's as right. he continues to bless us anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's it's a blessing just to be around that. Yeah. You know, have that, that kind of mentor and that kind of friendship. Uh, I'm grateful. You know, all I had to do was get close to this ministry to be blessed by it. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. That's good stuff. So I'm yeah. grateful for it, too, and I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we teach Jesus, and that's what you talked about, and that's the key. That's yeah. right. Uh, that's what we teach the guys coming in here. Uh, John 3.16 is just a place without those guys. That's right. That's, that's right. It's a bunch of empty buildings without those men. And uh, we get taught that, you know, every day. And that the, the real secret, the, the, it's not a secret at all. It's the, as old as time, the good news is Jesus. That's right. Uh, and what he's done for you. Even if you don't know him, he still loved you. He loved you when you are at your pit, at your mm-hmm. bottom. Um, you know, and I'm luckily, and I, you know, seeing it from the outside, it's a beautiful thing. God started preparing Malloy, and then He brought you into it, and He He knew He needed a Barnabas. Yeah. You know, so I see y'all working together, uh, like Paul and Barnabas did. You know, Paul was hated, despised, scared. Uh, everybody was fearful of him um, until <laughs> Barnabas come along <laughs> and said, "Hey, y'all got to y'all got to understand who the, what's going on. This is this. He's a weapon for God." Yeah. And, uh, and y'all work together quite well, uh, you know, and you always have your Timothy moments where you have to get taught, you know, but uh, mm-hmm. there's always, you, you got to have those relationships. You got to have, you're, you're in one of these three relationships as a Christian man. You're either a Paul, a Timothy, or a Barnabas. And you need to always have somebody around you that's teaching you. You need a, Tim, you need a Paul in your life. You need a Barnabas, that's somebody right. that's encouraging you, and you need a Timothy, somebody you're teaching yeah, at right. all times. That's right. Yeah. And, and and working together, you know, iron sharpens iron. Brandon Lee was in here last week, and we talked about how iron sharpens iron. And, and, as, and something I'll add to that, not without some friction. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. So, listen, me and him don't always get along. Yeah. <laughs> as, I mean, we will. I'll shake the head, my head at him, and he'll slam the door and walk away. But but I love him, you know. And that's that's where that friction is sharpening, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and it's that that true unconditional love. You know, I I know his love for Jesus. I know his heart for Jesus. I know his heart for doing good for men that have gone through this ministry, that are coming to this ministry, that are in this ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's the kind of stuff that no matter what differences we face, it always brings us back together because that's that's the foundation that we're built on is Jesus. That's right. So when we have that, you know, we can focus on the men. Yeah. You know, it's not about. Well, you did me wrong in this, so I'm gonna get you back mm-hmm. like it used to be. <laughs> you know, it's not. Hey, you know, you still owe me ten dollars from last week. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, go. I mean, we're on air. You might as well do it. Yeah, pay, him back. <laughs> pay him back already, the, Jim. The, the one. Th- the one. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this bridge of of the the and the men standing on the bridge with their picture taken. Y'all, y'all are gonna have to. Y'all gonna have to build a bigger bridge because y'all getting to where it's not a lot of room left. That's what it's all about, right? On there. the bridge, and what I'm trying to say is, is that there what when there's a lot more men at this ministry than there was two years ago, and it's it's really growing, and and and, and this ministry is blessed. Um, Good luck, Mentor. That took me an hour to do. <laughs> <laughs> So we got to get these. We got to get these houses He's built. Good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, with with COVID going on, it seemed like every and uh, and all those relief checks and whatnot from the government. Uh, it seemed like that we people didn't have a drug problem at that time. <laughs> you know, they they had money. Never ran out. Yeah, they didn't have to run out. <laughs> So it wasn't a problem. You Those know? relief checks were just like a shovel, just keep yeah. on digging down in that yeah. pit. Yeah, it, <laughs> uh, but but we, now, we that. yeah, now we're seeing guys, nineteen guys trying to get in, sixteen yeah. tries got to get in. Last week we took thirteen men in at one time. That's a blessing. Praise God. And uh, man, seeing the, the camp come back to life. That's right. And and needing those new houses. I remember when I got here as a resident, I had to sleep on a couch. Mm. All the beds were full, and I I went crazy. Uh, sleeping on that couch or they gave me a room because I couldn't sleep. I was just like bugging out, walking outside, in and outdoors, like maybe because I hadn't come down yet. But, <laughs> you know, that room was a blessing. We just got to go around on camp and get every guy on camp um, showing gratefulness for the room, you know, and stuff like that. So, you Guys, uh, I, I want to lift y'all up. Mm-hmm. You know, Manor and Brent and Eric, you, you, you guys have, you know, you, definitely in your calling and and it, you know somebody's got to do it right 
and and you guys are doing it. That's you right. You know, and and uh, with all the stuff that's going on out outside of here, you know, and all the things that tug and pull on us, you know, you guys are truly committed, man, and I I lift you up for that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We we lift y'all up for fighting what we call a good fight. I know. You know? I, I'm rather, rather you than me. I, I wouldn't <laughs> want to be out there. Y'all are the difference makers. You know, was, you know, being out there and and um, you know, because I've I've tried. This is my third time here. I've tried to to not distinguish between you know the spiritual warfare and the worldly warfare. You know, being out in the world but not of the world. And and I I, I couldn't succeed in that. Um, failed miserably. But praise God, this ministry. Um, had a spot for me. Absolutely. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. You know, and, as, and we're still kind of in a bubble, even where we're at. We're not living in reality. <laughs> you know, we live there at Micah 6 8 with the guys. Yeah. So, you know, nothing that we're doing is anything that we've done. It's something that we've been given, something that we've been blessed with. It's all about the community that trusts God. They don't trust us, they yeah. trust God. Yeah. And that's why they give the way that they do so that we can do his work with the men that are coming from here. Mm-hmm. Um, and the guys that are that are leaving Micah 6 we just had a few guys graduate. Um, they're the ones that are going to be the examples for men that are here. Mm-hmm. You know, so for the, the ones that are, are going back into reality, you know, they're going back out into these real-life situations, you know, remember the teaching. Right. Remember what you learn here. Because it applies there. Mm-hmm. No matter what, you've got to continue to do what you've learned here. Mm-hmm. You can't leave it behind. Yeah. Everything. I, I was have already had several conversations with some residents. Everything that the teaching here and Brian's teaching, I have had to use when I left here. It's, and it's, it's very important. Uh, that we take what we have t- been taught here uh, and, t- and to go out, you know, because it, you know, it's, it's rough. Mm-hmm. There's some rough days. Uh, but he said he's going to carry us through the mountains and through the valleys. Come on. Mm-hmm. And those through the valleys are some of the teachings that were here. Man, I love Brian Tobel. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that's a good man. It's in his calling, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and he, he, he will always be um, a shepherd of yeah. mine, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a level of respect. You know, God, you know, you know, he allowed God to move in him where he can help men who are broken. And, uh, um, mm. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. We all look for those mountaintops and try to work towards them, but the fruit grows in the valley, right? Come on, right. Yeah. So, that's right. So there's, there's I heard that the other day. I really yeah. liked it because it said no fruit, no no trees are even growing up on top nope. of that mountain. Yeah, you got to right. go to the valleys to grow. I was like, yeah. what? That's right. Never made sense. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah, that. And that's, that's where all the good soil's at. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, getting in, in those valleys and doing what we're supposed to in those hard times. Mm-hmm. You know, when we get to those good times, when we're at a peak or at a valley or at a mountaintop, you know, praising God in that time too, but being willing to go back into the valley again, you know, go back down in and, and share share what we've learned in those good times, in the bad times, because mm-hmm. that's when it's the most important. Mm-hmm. It's not when we're doing good. Right. You know, it's when we're at that low spot, and we, we show the example of who Christ is in that moment. That's when it's the most important for us to do good. Yeah. So. Well, being being this show um, today, you know, and it's just it's today that makes me think this. You know, I I, I didn't serve in the military. I don't know if anybody at this table did, um, but but I know this. We appreciate we appreciate that. Um, being Memorial Day, I know it's about it's about the men who did did lose their lives for this country. And That's right. uh, I'll tell you this much: whenever the national anthem's going on, I'm standing, and whenever the Pledge of Allegiance gets said, I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna put my hand over my heart, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm not ashamed of it. That's right. I'm not gonna kneel on a grass field. That's I guess what I'm trying <laughs> to say, um, because of the men that, that fought. Um, for this country and, and it allowed us to have the freedoms that we have today, uh, the freedom to, you know, of religion mm-hmm. that this country has. Uh, the reason why the, the people that came to this country in the first place was to get out from underneath religious oppression. 
uh, where they can serve the God they want to serve. Yeah. Um, and, uh, man, just to think of the people that died uh, just so that we could do the things that we may take for granted day in and day out or, or that we may see uh, just one day, you know, maybe it's just today that you see that, that sacrifice. Well, I hope that, that we can take the time to acknowledge that. Um, you know, this show, um, this show is, is able to go on because, one, Jesus died for our sins. That's he right. died on the cross. That's right. He died for the, the ones that, that loved him or hated him, the ones that crucified him, as well as the ones that followed him every day. He died for all of them. Yeah. Uh, and then the men that gave their lives for this country that where we could, we could have the liberties that we have. Um, thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Yeah, that's, both of my, my grandpas uh, fought. Um, they were, one of them was in the Air Force, one of them was in the Army. Yeah. And served well, and, you know, praise God, they both survived it. Yeah. You know, so I don't know what it's like to lose a family member to that. Yeah. But I know what it's like to have them that have served and, and done it wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, you know, my great-grandpa was in 101st Airborne Screaming Eagle. Uh, yeah. Dropped in behind behind Normandy on D-Day, like wow. uh, uh, Band of Brothers. That was his group. Like, th- those were his people. Cool. Yeah. He was a radio man. And uh, and I I got to read a little bit about that in a book. That's a blessing. Um, but but it's really cool. My brother also served in the military, but they they both made it home, as yeah. well. So, um, but guys, it, it's it's been a pleasure getting to sit and talk with you about what's going on in your lives and what the difference that you're able to make. Uh, because I know drug addiction doesn't discriminate. It takes people down through there. Um, if you're a veteran or not, it don't care. You yeah, know, right. um, the devil didn't either, and he doesn't. Uh, so we're we're in that spiritual warfare, man. You talked about that just a little bit earlier. Uh, we're trying to win more and more men to Jesus every day, uh, and that's what we're fighting for. We always say it's for the next man. It's like, all right, well, how about you fill up that wheelbarrow, or you get down in that hole and chisel out some rock for the next man for the next hour. You know, you already did your hour. Why don't you do it for the next guy for the next hour? You know, the the times that that work just seems a little bit hard. Well, you're doing that that for the next man. Uh, you don't know if you can make another phone call or connect to another person. I'll do it for the next man. I don't know if I can get onto this guy again because his room sucks and I really don't like him. Well, I can I can get along with him for the next guy coming, That's right. or at least learn mm-hmm. uh, from that man uh, and how to teach the next guy better. Um, you know, that's things that we go through day in and day out, and we're getting equipped for it each and every day. And and thank you guys for helping equip the others. Um, mm-hmm. For the guys that we send out, y'all are helping teach them the right way of being a Christian man in a free world. You can do mm. whatever you want to. Mm. It's all lawful, but is it beneficial? That's right. Mm. Uh, and then and then helping them know the difference in that. That's that's really good stuff. Um, that's fighting the good fight. That's having a Timothy. That's having somebody you're teaching. And uh, yeah, I, I guess that's really it. I can take the whole show oh, over. I just start talking. <laughs> uh, I love stuff. it. But, we we really appreciate the the opportunities that we get to have with you guys. Thank you, uh, Jesus. It, 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 that's that's what really matters to us. Yeah. The only the only reason the only reason why we're here is because of God's grace. Right? That's, that's right. right. It's it's nothing that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, just being obedient, being obedient to the Lord. You know. So. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And do, hey, how about we just? I, I know we didn't pray uh, at the beginning, but how about we get a prayer in <laughs> uh, to end it? And uh, Malloy, would you would you uh, take that and, and, and bless it? Absolutely. Yeah. God, I love you, uh, God, and I just thank you. Uh, I thank you for salvation. Yes. God, I thank you for John three sixteen ministry. God, I hope that the men that are trying to get in today. They say the right things to get in the ministry, God. And, God, I, I, I also pray for the men who graduate this ministry, get what I got from it. Yes. Um, God, I thank you for the men uh, in this room, at this camp, the men who, the instructors who have, are truly in their calling and have chose to stay here at this beautiful place, God, to give me life. God, I thank you for Scott. And his commitment to you, God, and to Micah 6-8 ministry. And God, I ask that you continue to to bring broken people. God, put put them in front of me, God, so I can share what you have done for me and what I've been taught here at John 3-16. 
God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's right. Well, yeah. we appreciate you guys joining us. Um, thank you. The pleasure is all ours, for sure. Um, well, just thank you for watching John 316's podcast, The Cure. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. Just uh, we'll, we'll tag you guys in there, too, is uh, the ministry. Um, yeah. Micah 6-8, yeah. um, as well as the church, and stay connected. And uh, I, don't, I don't care who it is that, that is able to, to deliver the gospel, as long as the gospel has been delivered. Amen? Amen. Yeah, you right. know what I'm saying? So yeah. we're all in this together. That's exactly um, right. Man, just going for the Great Commission. Um, yeah. Saving one at a time. Amen. That's what Amen. it's about, you know. So uh, just uh, just check us out. Check them out. Uh, just thank you for watching and listening. Um, stay tuned. Look forward to seeing you next time. Amen. Amen.